So now I'd like to shift to the second area to talk about our journey toward enabling pervasive insight. And as Guy mentioned, our journey toward providing managed self-service, a model where end users are getting their questions answered more directly out of the tools they're using every day. We're very excited about where we're headed here. We believe there's, there's an opportunity for us to dramatically increase the number of end users that are able to get their BI problems solved quickly. So to illustrate this, we're going to step outside of the usual slide mode for a bit and go through a, a fairy tale. So bear with me. I think this fairy tale is going to ring true to a lot of you. So it's a tale of business intelligence. And as all fairy tales do, it begins with once upon a time. Once upon a time, there was a company. And like many companies, they had a lot of data. And a busy IT department that everyone loved. I can feel the love. I know you can. The IT team built solutions for anyone who needed them. And everyone was happy. Until one day, the HR team needed a new report to compare salary data against industry trends, one of those pesky business questions that needed answering. And as they always do, they called IT for help. Hmm, IT said, industry trends. Huh, that's not in the data warehouse. And you know what? Probably shouldn't be in the data warehouse. And, uh, you know, we'd really like to help you, but we got a lot of projects. Don't think we can get that done. And so HR understood. <laughs> but then someone had a great idea. We could build the solution ourselves. He found some data. He entered it manually. He had a network of friends in IT. They could help him get some of the data. And even when the data was secure, he found a way to get it. I'm sure this never happens. And what application do you think he used? That's right. Excel. <laughs> and the result was pretty good. Pretty soon, a lot of people were using it. People you didn't even know were using it were using it. Some had modified it. But only he knew how it was built. Only he knew where the data came from. Only he knew what versions of data were in this solution. And IT didn't even know it existed. So <laughs> what possibly could go wrong? I think you know. But let's turn the page. Well, people may, may not always be there. Somebody had stopped working for some reason. You know, they could be on vacation. They could have retired. They could be sick, or even worse, <laughs> they might not be coming back. Of course, there's a moral to this fairy tale. As much as IT would like to, they can't meet all the demands. Users got to get their jobs done. Questions need answering, and they need so in a timely way. They're going to find a way to help themselves. And people are going to work hard, and they're going to bridge the gap on their own but they're really looking to us to provide solutions that are going to help them. And they want a solution that works in the tools they use every day. They don't want to be taught some new area of technology. They just want to get their solution built. They just want to get their job done. 
And everybody, IT end-end -end users, wanted to fit in with the end-to-end -end infrastructure. Everybody wants to be able to trust the data. And of course it has to deliver on all of the abilities. If you can answer and bridge these two gaps, everyone lives happily ever after, as they always do in fairy tales. So I think that's a, a familiar story, or at least aspects of it are, I think, familiar to everyone. And what I'm about to talk about is some features that we're on the way to delivering that are going to move toward creating that happy ending. So I first want to talk about SQL Server Kilimanjaro. So before we get a blog post that says SQL Server Kilimanjaro is the next major release of SQL Server, I wanted to clarify that we're going to continue on our commitment to deliver major releases of SQL Server every 24 to 36 months. Just as we did it with 2008 from 2005, we'll do with the next major release post SQL Server 2008. That's not what we're talking about. We're working on that. We're not talking about that today. What we're talking about is a release focused on this set of capabilities, Project Gemini in the area of self-service analysis and self-service reporting to additional capabilities. This isn't rework or rewrite or upgrade of things we delivered in SQL Server 2008. It's additional and new capabilities to enable this scenario in a release vehicle coming in the first half of calendar year 2010. That's SQL Server Kilimanjaro. So it is focused on enabling this self-service BI model. And that's really an end user statement. Managed self-service being saying it's IT can also manage the solution, manage the solution while end users are able to get their work done in a self-service manner. So let's first talk about Project Gemini. So Project Codename Gemini, we've been working on this since before SQL Server 2008 shipped. So we've been underway on this technology for a while. And let's take the, uh, part of the fairy tale forward. So I've been asked by my boss, I worked in HR, I've been asked to support some decision making around where salaries should go. And I need some data we have, which is where, where salaries are today. I need some industry data, and I want to bring it together in a BI solution to enable some decision making. So what do I need? Well, I need something, I need a user experience that works like I expect it to as a part of Excel. So what we're delivering is an add-in to Excel that will enable you to bring together high volumes of data and build that type of BI solution to do that type of analysis. But not in a way where it's like a modeling experience. We're not teaching every end user about star schemas and multi-dimensional models. We're doing it in a task-focused way that enables them to build their solution without having to understand all the underlying technology. That's the powerful thing in terms of enabling an order of magnitude more end users to use this technology. 